seems as though the ancients were very familiar with that kind. So when we say the word organ or organize, all right, let's say Shabbat Shalom, Senbet Salam, uh, Wendem Yadin, Ineneng, this is Ras Yadinos Teferi, Ras Ayadonis Tefar reporting for the Lion of Judah Society of His Imperial Majesty and broadcasting on a couple of channels, but in particular um, Ethiopian World Net, in case of emergency, add 911 to that, but regularly broadcasting the Torah portions on Rastafari Sabbathical, Sabbathical, and you see the link in the des descriptions. Okay, so this is um, where we're at. This is uh, Saturday, or uh, actually it's, it's the night, Friday night, Friday evening. So we're in the evening portion right now, in the evening of the of the Senbet Bamarinya and the Shabbat Be Ibrayist Kwankwa in the Hebrew. Now, um, it's uh, October 13th, right? And this is, uh, we've, we've gone through this uh, holy season, um, not fully as we would like to, being scattered here and there, um, being scattered in the diaspora. But let's recognize that in the Hadith Kidan, our dispersion is actually what was once our greatest so-called weakness, our dispersion is also our greatest asset in the covenant, you understand, and in the blessing, you understand, in the, in the new covenant of the Moshia Yeshua, right, in the new covenant is the greatest um, asset at this particular stage and, and where we're at right now, right, and where are we right now, we're in, um, we are after Sukkot, Sukkot 2012, or Tabernacles. Um, that was, what was it, the 7th, and then we have the 8th and ninth, the 8th day. And some Jews or some Torah Jews, uh, believing Jews, um, especially among the, the Gentiles, they would, they, they would have their Simchat Torah, and we address that in the... Uh, Sabbath House Torah readings, uh, 2011 to 2012. Um, the only thing that doesn't have right there is certain of the dates because this is the basic um, Auda uh, Senabitat or the orbit of the Torah portion readings and feedings. So therefore, the calendar, the Kenak Otater, the Luni Solar um, calendar is all based on what Genesis chapter 1 verse 14 speaks about the Moed, the Moedim, or the appointed times. So we've passed through the appointed times in spirit and in truth um, in this cycle or in this year, 2012. So now we're actually beginning, we're actually ending off the 54th, in the 54th Torah portion. Now, um, in some communities, since it's a, a Sabbath reading, and there are two kinds of Sabbaths. There's the annual Sabbath and the weekly Sabbath. The weekly Sabbath, the seventh day, and then the annual Sabbaths are the the holy days, the feasts, and the festivals of 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 Yod Hey Wow Hey of Yahweh um, Eloheinu, and in the Mushia Yeshua. Um, so. That needs to be understood. So th there's some important notes to consider. You'll see at the on the bottom of page uh, seven. Hopefully you've downloaded it and and also check out um, on the Rastafari Sabbatical. And ho hopefully we'll get a chance to post it also on Ethiopian World Net. But if that should it's just, should some emergency or it goes offline and you get the um, the um, um was the clown face the you know they put that little oh sorry this channel or whatever like that hopefully 911 rastafar uh uh ethiopian world net 911 and some of the other channels but mainly we're broadcasting a rastafari sabbatical that's the main point that we're seeking to get across to those who are interested in the in the bible studies and and discipleship to check us right there and you know we we grow as a tree planted 
by Yahoo, so other branches, other sites, so forth and so on, in due time and due season. So what is the reason for this uh, 54th Torah portion? Right? It's called, yeah, Barak Kabat Barakat Yehichnat. Yeah, Barak Kabat Barakat Yehichnat. And it's from Deuteronomy 33, the portion, the the Musehig in Moses' law, or what we call Torah, the Orit, is Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 1, the reading, to Deuteronomy uh, chapter 34, verse 12, right? Now, there's something that needs to be understood. If you look right below it, um, we have portions marked with an asterisk can be added to the following week's readings. That's, that's not a portion that's marked with an asterisk. But the important note to consider, to keep in mind down here is, it says there are 54 yesenbet orit nebab or yesenabetat, if you will, but um, all the readings from Yemuse Hig. Yemuse Hig, or of Moses' law, or the Torah, the Mosaic Torah, literally the law of Moses, Muse, the head of the fraternal order of the Lewawian, the, the Israelites, forming the portions or the Parshiot, Parshiot called Bamarinya, the Kufloch, while singularly, in the singular sense, is Kufl. Kufl is the singular form in the Amharic of a portion right of a portion namely there is one kufl or portion for each sabbath each week of the year so that in the course of a year or the aude right the aude sanabitat the orbit of of sabbaths beginning and ending or the alef tau the alpha omega on the holy day that is known as the orit Desita, right? Yori desta, 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 right? In the Hebrew, simchat, simchat Torah, meaning the joy of or in the law, in the law of Yahweh, Yod He Wow He. In the Gutters, it's the Fisha, 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 Fisha. Right? Ethiopic word for joy. The Fisha actually orit. I don't see it fully right here. So it'll be Fisha orit. So that's the place we have to update it. Um, so we would have read and studied the entire orit, Zemuse, or the Torah of Moses, the Mosaic Torah, in our weekly or the Sen Betawi Agel Gelot or the Sabbath services, the Sabbath ministries, in other words, the Sabbath services. Agel, agel Galot, right, is, is uh, service, but in the King James Bible, it's been translated as ministry. So that's a whole teaching on that particular, how, how much you can learn from one um, Ethiopic word, you understand, from, from just one word. Yovas, and then that one word, the clarity of it really helps much. And we were just saying before we got into this recording that this is about organization. When we talk about organized, but in the English, it, it, it's a, it's it's more limited and more jaded in a sense. This is why we have to go to our roots. Some say, why well, go to the etymological roots? Well. What does the word etymology mean? In truth, it means etym. Etymos means true. Look it up. Etymos means true, right? And logos, the true word. So we don't, we don't get into logical fallacies or false words or, or gnosis or pseudonymos, or Gnosticism or, or science falsely so-called because there's a lot of that going on out there. All right, so during non-leap years, there are 50 weeks, right? So some of the shorter portions are doubled up like a leap year adds an additional month of uh, four weeks to the usual lunar 12 called a dar the second or dar i i right in the lunar and in the, in the leap times right a hebraic lunar base or so-called jewish calendar so we'll say 
to the Dek Amezamore, to the disciples and the brothers and the sisters and the mothers, um, you know, check out some of the Jewish calendars out there. You understand so that ones can understand how this really works. In other words, it's like what happened to Moses where he put his hand into his bosom and he brought it out and it was leprous. It was white as snow. You remember that? It was like, not as snow, but it was leprous and, and white, right? But then when he put his hand back in, it came out to his other flesh. This is where we're at right now. You understand? We have to put our hand in and now bring it out again. So understand that, right? Um, so the calendar, right? A, a Hebraic lunar base, a so-called Jewish calendar. Ayhudawi, uh, Kenak, Otater. That will indicate if a year is a leap year or not, all right? A leap year or not. They talk about the Mayan calendar, how there's two or three calendars or, you know, all in one, right? Well, our calendar, the Ethiopic, the solar, the solar lunar or the luni solar is, is likewise. And that kind of also explains Amos 9 and 7. Where he says, aren't you like the children of the Ethiopians, right? The children of 13 months of sunshine. Right, so that is solar clearly unto me, O Bene Israel, O children of 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 Israel. You understand? Or the lunar, right? The lunar. So in the old covenant or the Torah, the old testament was a lunar, right? But in the new it is solar, or more correctly, is solar lunar or luni solar. We say solar lunar, they say luni solar. So just in grace, you know, this is why we say that so ones know exactly what we're referring to. Now, on the week of Fasika, the Fasika, right, Passover or Pesach, and the week of Sukkot, right, different Torah portions are read. So on leap years, that leaves 52 weeks for the 54 readings. So two weeks have double portions or the Ma'at, right, the double portions. Right, a darb it if right, darb it if like doubling over the double portions and so on. Non leap years that leaves forty eight weeks for the fifty four. So that means there's six weeks, right, that have double portions. Six weeks. Now, don't allow this to you know become too complicated right now. It takes actually it's in doing that we have even. Um, gathered more, you know, gain more, more, more confidence. It's growing it, the growth in application, in other words, by applying it and by doing it. As um, I think it's John's Gospel, chapter seven, verse seventeen. If anyone will do his will, they will know. They will get the gnosticoi. They will have a knowing because you know, because you know, because you know. And and, and then look, behold, there's evidence. There's evidence here, there, and everywhere. All right. Um, so now this has to be understood right here. So this is where we're at right now. Now, if you look at the additional part shiot, let's do this right here. The additional part shiot or the kufloch for the holidays or the holy days, right? If you look at page, I think it's nine, you find the simchat Torah. Now on the simchat Torah, now, okay, look at this right here. This is important to look at the Sukkot, the Sukkot Shabbat read on the Shabbats of the Sukkot. Sukkot has already passed tabernacles in that sense from the Old Testament, Metasebia. But in the New Testament, in the Moshiach, Yeshua, right, um, this is a, in a new and a living way. In other words, uh, Hebrews 10 and 20, if I'm correct, speaking about a new and a living way. This is why we've been, in, in the good news of His Majesty and His Christ, uh, Yeshua HaMoshiach, Jesus Christos Ketachin. It's very important for us to understand the cross, the Meskel, right? And Yeshua's his sacrifice, Jesus' sacrifice, what it really did to really recognize what sort of a world or reality we are really living in and getting into the true spirituality. But the religion or the hymenote or the basic discipline, these are the basic keys right here. Not making a religion out of it, you understand, but sometimes you have to give certain instructions to ones that can help them to get in the spirit and the truth of it. It's not for them to glorify these instructions, but to walk them out and work them out to reach the true destination, you know, the true um, 
um, great summit destined for I and I, as Kadamawi Haila Selassie testifies to us by the great Creator. So, you you will see on page nine, there's the Simcha Torah, right, and the Torah portions, and this this will be for this time right here. But before it is the Shemeni Atzeret or the Sementenya, um, um, that the Sementenya. Uh, Ken, the eighth day. Now, the eighth day comes right after the seven days of Sukkot. So it's, it's to recognize that. Occasionally, that day will be a Shabbat day, and that Shabbat day, Simchat Torah, those things kind of align all perfectly. You understand? When it's in Jah's time, right? When it's in his, his time for it to um, do so. Now, if you look at the footnote, we have the Fisha or the Fisha. Right or the joy, fisha or rit, refer to uh, Deuteronomy 28 and and 47, Psalm 16, 11, Luke 15 and 32. That's all references to study a little bit more on this particular topic and theme to see how in the shadow or the Old Testament how it has been fulfilled and how it is fulfilling even in I and I even within I and I, the Mitmanon, or the Amanyoch, right? Those who have the Amen, or who have the Imnet in the Amen, the, the marriage of the Lamb. Yehovah is that Imnet, you understand? Our soul, psychic faith, our soul's faith in he who is the Amen, in the Mushia Yeshua. Now, with that being kind of said, just, just to kind of clarify, because this is probably posted under um, Simchat Torah, you know, saying because this particular Shabbat, um, yeah, Barakabat, Baraket, Yehichnat, if we consult with the summary, um, the summary Torah portions that we're still seeking to probably get online so that ones can at least download a copy. Yehovah's maybe perhaps a minor donation or not, but download a copy of, of each of the five portions and can utilize that in the studies while we work on the Aliyot. You understand the Aliyot uh, upgraded portion, taking it step by step. So anyway, it's called uh, Vezot or Vezot Ha Baraka. Vezot. Some say Vezot, uh, Vezot Ha Baraka, um, or the Ashkenazi say Zos Ha Broko. Ha Broko is the way the Ashkenazi say it. But we say uh, We Vezot Ha Baraka. Ha baraka is very similar to the 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 pure language. The met af kedus, yeah. Barakabat, baraket, yehitch, yehitch not, right? Yehitch. So there's a feminine. There's there's a there's a there's a feminine aspect to it when we study the the energy, the electromagnetic, if you will, or the wende sete um, energy. So the Hebrew, the Ibraist for and this is the blessing this is the, the blessing right it's the first words in this portion in this kufal in this parsha and it is the 54th and the last weekly torah portion parsha in the annual jewish or judaic ayhudawi um cycle the aude the aude or rit or the cycle of torah reading or rit minbab or nibab and it's the eleventh and last in the book of Deuteronomy in Orit Zedagim or Devarim in the Hebrew, right? So it constitutes Deuteronomy thirty-three verse one to Deuteronomy thirty-four verse twelve. Now, um, the Ayhud, Ainai is the black Ayus or so-called Jews in that sense, or Ethiopian Hebrews, um, Beta Israel, elect Rastafari, um, generally along with others, read it in September or October, September or October on the Simchat Torah festival. So this is actually a festival time, but a festival, it's not the outer aspect of festivals, it's really the inner aspect, because you can be in the outer festival, but if what's going on in the inner, you understand is not, you, so you recognize that the inner is, is, is where it begins. This is the technology of the wisdom of God. See, the world does it outside in. They're doing everything outside in. But for I and I, in the Moshiach, in Yeshua, it is inside out to the glory of Abba. So praise ye Yah. 
immediately, or the Yawinu, after reading Parashah's um, Vezot, Vezot Habaraka, the Ayahud also read the beginning of the Torah. So after reading this, the beginning of the Torah, or Genesis, um, Bere, Bereshit, or um, Berasit, right, um, Genesis, the genealogy of what Oset, Isis, the, uh, Genesis chapter 1, verses 1, to Genesis chapter 2, verse 3, which is the beginning of the Parsha. Um, Bereish, Bereshit, Bereshit, right? As the second Torah reading, that's the second Torah reading for this, the Simchat Torah for the Fisha Orit. Now the Parsha, the Kufl, it sets out the farewell blessing, right? The farewell blessing of uh, Mashu, of Musa, of Moshe, of Moses, the head of the fraternal order of the Lewawiyan, or of the Levites, for the 12 tribes, right, of Israel. And then, right, and then is the death of, of Moses, then it's the death of the the fraternal head, uh, right? Of of Moses, right here. Now, that, it's very interesting because the Bible says else, elsewhere that death reigned from Adam to Moses, and then we see that that Yeshua HaMoshiach in the and through the trans uh, uh, figuration on on Mount Tabor, as the Ethiopians say, but really it is that mountain is the Hermones or the Mount Hermon, which is Siwon, Sewon, or Zion with an S, that that triple peak, a Selassie peak, the mountain, right? Um, that mount of um, the Transfiguration. But that that mount is very very interesting to those of us who have had the opportunity to receive more insight into what took place on that mountain. Basically, that's the same mountain where the fallen angels first alighted. That was Satana's um, transformation point. These are where certain things um, um, on the spiritual, the matter and the antimatter universe kind of uh, links right there. And that was, you remember where, where, where Yeshua says that he has to deal with the prince of this world, right? The prince of this world, Satan or Satana had to deal with the prince of this world. And then he says that all power, all Satan, all authority. Now we say sultane to say um, a, a, a civilization, right? A civilization. Uh, and that's also interesting right there because what we're learning here in the Torah portions is not just um, some, you know, some historical art and facts. And no, no, it's more of civilization as we get to walk in this, as we walk in it in a new and a living way in Yeshua HaMoshiach and, and through the cross recognizing the Meskel, the true Meskel of his majesty, of his divine majesty. So now the summary of this is first is the blessing of Musa and then secondarily is the death of Musa. Now that's kind of very interesting when we start to look in the the book of uh, Hebrews or, or the the um, Melikita Ibrawian or the epistle to the Hebrews and we find out that um, you know concerning the lion of the tribe of Judah and, and the tribe of Judah you understand um, the tribe of Yehuda it is a very interesting connection there as well and um, if we get a chance we're just mentioning it right here so that others you know being guided by the Ruach HaKodesh can study up on it and Yah willing we can also present perhaps a a, a teaching on that as well. So um, where we're at right now is I want to look up look up a particular verse. We actually was touching on fire and water because of the Rastafari uh, Kabbalah, or Kabbalah of Jah time. Uh, kind of a brief vid we put up there just on Jah time because some ask these questions. They're like, well, well, how could God, in a sense, manifest you understand, but we have Yeshua. He is the 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 the, the God Man, or He is God manifested in the flesh, and we cannot get to the Father's house or to the Father to Abba, only in and through Yeshua Hamoshia. So He's like the Star Gate. 
He's like the gateway of that. Now, let's um, just look this up right here um, when it says how death reigned from Adam to Moses. Because when we think about, oh, if we look at it in the Old Testament sense, it might be like, oh, man, that's Moses, you know. Like when we said about Moses, civil rights is affirmative action. We talked about and Moses touching on, you know, Negro civil rights and everything is, is dead. A lot, all that is dead, you understand? But a lot of folks don't want to recognize that it's dead, you know. In the words, um, it's like the Old Testament to the New Testament that whole link right there you understand that it was given to the Jews or to the Yehuda it was given to I and I but how we how we drop the ball and how in grace um, Yeshua has been sent in the sense to the the team you know what I mean almost on the spiritual level greater than a so called Michael Jordan you understand when you really think about it when you understand it but here in Romans chapter 5 verse 14 it says nevertheless Death reigned. Now, it uses the word reign. And it's interesting that if we look at the word reign, reign doesn't mean and death was around and, you know, death was in town and, you know, but it said death reigned. I mean, you have to just think about the significance of that word. You, you understand? What is death? Who is death? You understand? Death is the enemy. You see, death is the enemy. The Bible says death is the last enemy to be destroyed. You understand? And this is why we preach and, and proclaim the good news of the King of Kings and his Christ. You understand? Both because it is true and because of the demonstration in and through Kedamawi Haile Selassie. You understand? Of the God man, of Yeshua HaMoshia, that true testimony in a time. You understand? It's like unless God has shortened the days, not even the very Chruyan would be saved right unless he has shortened those days and that those times that's the visitation of Kedemawi Haila Selassie shortening those days but we have to be wise to salvation ourselves mm -hmm. because we are partakers on that level or we are to be we are given the 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 choice you understand the choice is, is put before you well, Moses gave the choice in a couple of Torah portions previously Right? We just went over that again. That choice is there. You understand? Between blessing and between curse. Between life, hewet, and between death, moat. You understand? So moat, and that's interesting, moat, because moat was a Canaanite, um, moat was a Canaanite uh, uh, deity, what they'll call God, right? And false pseudo emanation, new world order zeitgeistism. The zeitgeistism basically is is all about that. The, the zeitgeist, because you have poltergeist. You know, the zeitgeist is the gateway to the poltergeist. If you if you understand it, this is why we see that you know spiritually and and in reality what's going on. The earth is like turning into hell. You understand? It's turning into Sheol, the Duat, the underworld. It's like the underworld has become in this world. People say it's a myth and this and that, but then why are so many people, you understand, working so hard consciously and unconsciously to manifest a myth? You understand? It, 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 it's, it's a great um, shortcoming to think that the ancients were, were, were stupider, you understand, were like dumber than us in a sense, especially when we look at the scriptures and and even so-called mythologies and so forth and so on and then look at look at the situation that faced us right now mm -hmm. and the interesting thing is that most folks they already know about you know now with information going to and fro they already know about these things but in spite of what they know as um me says you know they continue to do what they they do so nevertheless Right, death reigned from Adam, right? So then we we, we, we try to make not not light of it, but, but basically Adam, you know, um, to Musa, to Mashu, to Moses. So wait, wait, hold on for a moment. But Moses died. How and why could Moses die if death only reigned from here to there? Let's ask that question. How could Moses die? You understand? But then we read in Jude in in Yehuda. In Yehuda's uh, Melikit, in, in Yehuda's epistle, his didactic, his uh, teaching letter, you have to make it autodidactic. You have to self, you understand, learn it and self 
self-teach, self-learn, and self-be taught. You understand? In this, he speaks in his one-letter epistle, his letter, letter. One letter, letter, right? Not one letter, single letter, but one single chapter. Let's put it like that. Um, called Jude, right? He says that um, there was some wrestling, it seems like, over the body of um, Moses. What? The body of Moses? Why would they be wrestling over the body? It reminds me of what we hear in the bone lies concerning Haile Selassie when we hear about these bone lies. Some people believe it. Well, I guess that's their right right there because there's a choice. You understand? Of truth or a lie or whatnot. You know, and they choose to believe the lie or they've been hoodwinked and bamboozled to believe. You know, they'll say, well, look, there's His Majesty's uh, tomb or whatnot like that. You understand? But everything we've heard about it has been really a bone lie. You understand? I mean, the bone's too big, gold teeth in the mouth, not the right size, you know? And then the evidence of, of the living man that we've had since then to now. You understand? And there's a few pictures which are very, um, um, not even just, uh, uh, you know, um, um, uh, coincidental. Yeah, I mean, it's a coincidence, but more and more we find to be very compelling. You know what I'm saying? But then again, we say our faith is not based on the picture. You know what I'm saying? Our faith is based on the fact, both the fact in I and our own walk and I and our own life. You know what I'm saying? The gnosticoi, in other words, that you know, that you know, that you know. You understand? But what about death reigning from Adam to Moses? It, it, it would make it seem that, well, after, and this is New Testament, Romans 5, 14, that after um, Moses, right, nobody else should have died. Could it be that there was a possibility that no one else had to die, but because of that, let's call it the, the golden calf incident. You know what I'm saying? Perhaps after the golden calf incident that more ones, um, people died or death still somehow reigned. But then what about this wrestling over Moses' body that we read about? Um, let's see if we can get this, get this scripture over here. Right, get this scripture over here. Okay, could we just get you know just getting into this right now, right here, right now? Um, Kobe was gonna perhaps wait a little bit, just kind of just first keep the Sabbath or remember the Sabbath because that's the key word they're remembering. You see, remembering it's it's a, it's a mental ascent because we have to be born again from above. You understand, know um, Nicodemus didn't really understand that too too well and that's why christ said you being you know you being a, a master of israel you understand a rebbe of israel you don't understand these things you know wow that's deep you know he recognized how deep you know how deep the situation was for our um first century um people